This is how to set up VirtualBox with a VM. So and we're going to use the latest VirtualBox and I'm just going to use Ubuntu. We're going to go to download. Once you're on virtualbox.org. And since I'm on a Windows 10 machine, I'm going to use a Windows host for my download. I'm just going to click that. Once that finishes the downloading, we're going to install VirtualBox. Click that. Then we click yes. And that should um, open up the setup wizard. Next accept the terms and then we don't have to change anything it's fine as is so you just click next again it says it will temporarily disconnect that's fine and then install the missing dependencies so we're going to click yes i personally don't want a shortcut on my desktop or a shortcut in my quick launch bar so i'm going to uncheck that but you can leave it checked if you want and then I'm, you just install it um i'm not gonna use this one we don't need virtual box extension pack you would use this if you need more features like uh, remote access and I think encryption or something. Uh, remote, disk encryption, pass. Yeah, so we, we don't need that, so we're not going to use it. Okay, so now that the installation is complete, it says start Oracle VirtualBox. We'll just finish it and it will boot up the VirtualBox manager. After that, make sure you have virtualization enabled. To do this, enter your BIOS by restarting your computer and press either F2, delete, or F10 depending on your what motherboard you have. I press delete to enter my BIOS. Um, if you accidentally enter the boot menu instead, you can still get to the BIOS from there. For example, I pressed F12 to enter my boot menu and to get to the BIOS from there, you click enter setup and it'll bring you to the same exact spot. To enable virtualization on AMD, it should say SVM mode, which stands for Secured Virtual Machine. And for Intel-based systems, it should say something like Intel Virtualization Technology. For AMD, it'll be in Advanced Frequency Settings. And then you click Advanced CPU Core Settings. And then just set SVM mode to enable. Then just save and exit. If you don't see any of these options, you're probably in easy mode. So go into advanced mode or classic mode to be able to access these options. To avoid potential problems with VirtualBox, I do recommend disabling Hyper-V if your system has it. So here it says Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise and Windows 11 Pro and Enterprise has it. So checking if it's enabled and disabling it could avoid potential problems. But to disable it, just go to control panel and then go to uninstall a program and then up here will be turn Windows features on or off. And then there'll, just, there'll be this thing that says Hyper-V. And you can just, if it's selected, like if it's checked, that means it's enabled. So you would just make sure that it's unchecked. Click OK and then restart your computer to make sure the changes take effect. That should prevent potential issues relating to Hyper-V. We're going to now download Ubuntu. Um, so you can go to Ubuntu.com. Just click download Ubuntu, Ubuntu desktop. Um, you click download Ubuntu desktop here and it brings you over here. And we're going to download this one. And this is like the latest one. So it will it should start automatically. I already downloaded it, so I'm just going to cancel it. But I also want to show you how you can know which version you downloaded. So first, when you download it, it should say release notes somewhere. What? I'm gonna go back a little bit. Okay, see if you, before you click download, you can click release notes over here and it'll show you the version. It says Noble Numbat. Of course, you're, you're downloading one later than this a little bit. Okay, so ours is a 24.04.2. Yeah, and you can see the releases. Like if you go to Ubuntu releases, the second one down when it says wiki.ubuntu.com releases, it, also, it shows you the end of standard support and the end of life. So ours, we're downloading this one. So it says end of standard support, June 2029, and then end of life is April 2036. So once you finish downloading the Ubuntu uh, ISO, we can uh, create the virtual machine now. So you would click new and we'll just name it Ubuntu for simplicity and it will automatically create the subtype the version and stuff and I'll save it here and you can just go through here oh we have to select the ISO image other I'll select this okay so you do this go through this process 
I'm just gonna go through the unattended installation because I don't see anything wrong with going through this route. You can name yourself what you want, get your password. I'm gonna set up guest editions in the VM. So you go to hardware and you can choose base memory is the amount of RAM. So I'm gonna give it 14. You could give it as long as it's in the green and then the processor is ideally somewhere the more you give the easier it will, it will run as long as it's not too much you know it's, it's red you don't want to be in the red oh i'm also i'm not going to enable the efi i don't see the need for it and create a virtual hard disk now this will just create this folder it, it'll be slightly different for you but this is where mine is and this will be where your hard drive space is stored so i'm going to put 30 gigs and I'm just gonna leave it as a virtual disk image, VDI. Just leave it, that's that's fine the way it is. Next, I'm gonna check pre-allocate full size because I don't want my virtual hard disk to dynamically grow. Pre-allocate takes up more space up front but won't go over the space you set. And now we just click finish. During the install, I get an error message. It fixes itself for me just by giving it time to go through. But if that doesn't happen and you're stuck on the purple error screen, shut down the VM, go into your VM settings, click display, and then increase video memory. Change the graphics controller to VBox SVGA and try out either the default or XORG and use whichever works better for you to fix it. This part does usually take a while, but if you are concerned that it got stuck on you, if you click this right here, this opens up like a terminal thing and it shows you what it's doing yeah so as long as this is like updating it's doing stuff okay so it automatically restarts when it's finished okay so now you can log in you just click that put in your password and then you're in we can skip this for now you can do that if you want but i'm skipping it now this is we still have issues with resizing so it, it doesn't resize because we don't have guest editions we'll set up the guest editions now and the way to do that is you go to devices you insert guest edition cd and it should pop up right here before we run it we have to install some prerequisites so you would go to terminal run this command uh, sudo apt install build Centrals and then DKMS and then the Linux header dash dollar sign and then you would do you name our I'll try it one more time. Maybe I misspelled, misspelled something. I don't think I did. sudo apt update. Okay, then it should be sudo apt install. Oh, you know what it is? I I, t I added an s. It's my bad. If you don't want to make a mistake like I did, you could actually search for the command in the in the browser, which would uh work inside the Linux. You can't, you can't cut, what? Uh, update software has been issued since install now. Okay, that was a mistake. You should, you should wait to update. You should only run the command after this is done. So th this is my bad. If the software is updating, like the update thing you see, do not run the command. But once this is done, this will work. But like the, the browser does work. So like, let's say you wanted to copy and paste instead of typing it manually you could do something like sudo install build you know you could find it like that and you could just copy and paste that but typing it isn't too bad as long as you type it correctly but i have to wait for this to finish and then it'll go through okay so i'm gonna do it one more time sudo apt update all right and then i'm gonna run it like <laughs> copy and paste this this time see how that works see now it's going through you click yes to continue yeah so if you if you're bad at typing uh searching it up will and then just copying and pasting it might be better but yeah now it's now it's installing the prerequisites 
So now that's done, we still got to do this part. This is where we run the guest editions. So we, we open up this and then we click run software. So we just run it. And then you have to type in your password. So just to recap, if you don't have it over here, I just went device, insert guest edition CD image. That'll make the CD appear here. Then you click on the CD and then you click run software and then it will build it. Press return, so click enter. And now resizing works so that it was successfully installed. Now that we have the guest editions installed, you can enable stuff. Like if you go to devices, you could say share clipboard or and you can select which way, like host to virtual machine or virtual machine to host or bi-directional means both ways. And then drag and drop is so you can drag stuff from the VM to the host machine and vice versa. You can also view these settings um, in the settings of the virtual box manager, or you can change it in the VM as you saw us do or me do. I'm going to test if copy and paste works, but I'm pretty sure you have to restart the VM for it to take effect. Go, yeah, see nothing. So once you install, once you run the guest editions, you will have to restart the VM. So I'm just going to power off the machine and start it back up. Okay, so you type in your password, log in, there's a text editor, copy and paste this testing word, and then I'll do it. So now, now it's able to do that. Although I got copy and paste to work for like links and text, I can never really get the drag and drop to work for the VM. I've never had an issue with not being able to use drag and drop since I can use a shared folder to transfer files back and forth. But if you want to try drag and drop functionality, you can try it. But it's a common issue for it not to work. But some people say it works when you're in X11 desktop, which is like this X org thing that you can switch in the login screen of the VM. So I'll, I'll show what that looks like. In the settings, you know, I changed it to bi-directional, so to enable it, and I start it up. This is a reminder, you can set it here too, if you want to set drag and drop to bi-directional. It had that weird menu from before because the VM, I crashed it before. So that's why it had that weird load up. So you click here, you'll see the settings icon and you can change it to Ubuntu on Xorg. But I can never get that to work. I'll, I'll try it again. See if I can get past. But it would never like fully boot for me. It would kind of hang. I take, I stand corrected. It, it worked this time. I'll see if drag and drop works. I'll open up new file. Create a folder called test. I guess I just have to restart. I think the last time I tried it didn't work. It got hung up, but I guess because I re, oh. Yeah, I guess it still doesn't work for me, even though I got past it. So it gives me that same error that uh, a lot of people tend to run into. Um, yes. So, I don't know, it just seems like a common issue. And since shared folders always worked for me, I always use that instead. Yeah, but y you can try it if you want. I mean, it might work for you. But I do recommend disabling it if you're not going to use it. Like, since I can't get it to work. I don't want it to be enabled because every time I do something like this, it'll make an error pop up. But if you disable it, okay, I think I have to restart the VM. I think it made it lock up on me. Okay, so I'm going to power it off and I'm going to restart it. I'm going to change it back to, I believe, Wayland. I think the default is Wayland. I think there's X11, which is the X org, and then the, the normal one is just the default, which I'll just leave it as. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change it to what it was before, default Ubuntu. Hopefully it's disabled. Yeah, it's disabled. I don't know if it got stuck because I just changed it from Ubuntu to Xorg. But if it, if it hangs too long, I usually just restart the VM rather than wait for it because it shouldn't take that long to boot up. It, just restarting it is tends to be faster. That's the same, yep. Now that I have it disabled, no error will pop up because we don't have that functionality enabled, so it's not looking for the ability to do that. So no error pops up, but you can still uh, still copy and paste stuff. Like, if I want to copy and paste the link, 
I can still copy and paste stuff from the whole thing. So, and that's good enough for me. The clipboard is still active. Drag and drop to say it bold. And that's usually the way I do it. And I just use the shared folder instead for transferring files back and forth. Okay, so now to create a shared folder, you can actually just go here and there'll, there'll be this thing called shared folders over here. So you click this, it will automatically open up the settings and bring you to here. This is nothing special. This is just, this is actually here. You can get here this way too, where you just click settings. It's just using the VM, it just automatically brings you there. But anyways, you go to shared folders. It's the same exact spot. And for this one, I'm going to use machine folders because transient folders means it will disappear. So pretty much uh, once you turn off the virtual machine, the folder will vanish. So I want a machine folder. So I'm going to go to this plus sign, add new shared folder, folder path. This is going to other, and I can just create it here. You can create the shared folder wherever you want. I'm just going to call it shared. Then I'm going to double click that and click select folder. And now that's my folder shared. I'm going to select auto mount. This shared folder will be permanent. Yeah, I think per leaving it permanent is fine. That, this means it will stay there and okay and then um okay that's fine and now when you go to your files it should say shared folder but you won't have access to it like i'll say you do not have necessary permissions and that's because you have to add yourself add your specific user account it's called a vbox sf which stands for vbox shared folder so you'd open up the terminal and then you do sudo and then add user dollar sign user all caps and then vbox sf and then this will add you well yeah you gotta put in your password and then you'll be added to the vbox sf and then i'm gonna go to my shared folder on my host machine so here's the shared folder or the location i set for the shared folder you just go here click files you can use the shared folder Okay, and th the reason why it's not working is you gotta restart the VM as usual. So you power it down and then um, you restart it. And that should update the connection so it'll work. Okay, now. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my shared folder and I'm gonna drag and drop this file. And you're gonna notice it appears over here. Now, let's say I create a file on my host machine i'm just gonna call it uh host machine file no i misspelled it who cares and i'm gonna drag it onto the you know shared folder and it won't appear here just because it doesn't update as fast on linux for some reason so if you go back and forth now it's updated and it shows it here so now you can transfer files back and forth from the vm to your host and vice versa and that's, that's pretty much how you do it